Hey guys, I'm Zoltan and you are watching Phalanx Miniatures and today we are going to be painting a Knight of Justice from the Infinity Military Orders action pack. While you are watching me paint the base coat on this dude, let me tell you how I went from my happy little Warhammer bubble to painting an Infinity model. A couple of weeks ago I went on a trip to the US and I visited some, well, let's be honest, way too many hobby stores in the Austin area to see if our friends across the pond have something we don't. To be honest, I was a bit disappointed overall by the selection, but checking out some of the display cases in one of the stores, I came across a model I have never seen before. And it was simply beautiful. Someone must have painted it for a competition or something like that. And as I found out later, he managed to replicate the box art almost perfectly. I just couldn't tear my eyes away from it. So I did a bit of research and it turns out that the model was the, well, I'm going to butcher the name probably, but the Guigia Squadron uh, attack from Infinity, the skirmish miniature war game from Corvus Belli. Uh, attack, by the way, stands for a tactical armored gear. This is one of the biggest Infinity miniatures that you can get. Since then I bought this miniature as well and it is waiting for me to muster up the courage to paint it but at the same time, I also went down the rabbit hole, found some of my favorite models in the Infinity range and bought a fair few of them, to be honest. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see me paint some of the tags on the channel, since now I have a couple of them. But let's get back to today's project, our pan Oceanic guy in heavy armor. These guys are actually quite chunky for Infinity models, which are usually smaller than what you would expect after painting Warhammer. They are the same scale, but they are not the heroic scale, I guess, like Warhammer, so they don't have the larger heads, the weapons and the limbs, but look like regularly proportioned humanoids. And most of the models in the military orders range are a bit bigger due to the heavy armor that they wear. This combination of medieval style armor and technology really works for me. I guess there is a reason I like Space Marines in 40k as well. The models are also made out of metal and they are extremely detailed, which makes them super fun to paint. The box arts are stunning, going for a much more artistic style than the heavy metal painting style Warhammer uses. And obviously for any normal human, it's hard to replicate what the artist achieved here because they are just insanely talented. But let's see what we can do to at least get close to it and still be able to reproduce it across the whole army. I'll be using mostly Vallejo paints for this model because they are the brand partnering with Infinity, but also because they are still my favorite paint brand, to be honest. Citadel is awesome, but Vallejo is just a bit better and not just because of the dropper bottles. There is a box of paints, including all the basic colors needed for the standard Pan Oceania color scheme. I didn't go for it since I already had most of the paints in my collection that I needed and I can easily substitute the rest. But it is really worth picking it up if you don't have the right paints uh, and it also gives you a free mini, which is always nice to have. The armor is obviously the most important point of this mini and how well I managed to highlight it will be the defining factor in how the model will look. So the armor will always take priority and the rest of the elements are there to just frame that. The base coat of dark Prussian blue gave me a nice and dark color to work from. Once I had most of the blue armor blocked in, I went ahead and also base coated all the rest of the elements. I used black to block in all the parts that were meant to be metal later. The box art of Infinity always shows the models with non-metallic metals rather than with true metals, which is way more fun to paint anyway, so I decided to do that as well. The white parts came next and I used sky grey for this. I might go for something else next time since I am not the biggest fan of how the whites came out in the end. I might go for something darker as the base coat and highlight it up from there rather than starting with such a light color from the get-go. I made a big decision with the cape and instead of the original white of the box art I painted it a yellowish brown. I felt that I needed a bit more saturated color in there. You guys tell me in the end if you like it or not but I ended up quite happy with it. Finally, I added some of the leather elements with some cavalry brown. I ended up changing some of these colors later, since this is essentially the first of these armored guys that I painted, I was still in the process of figuring out the scheme. I painted one of the female characters before, but the scheme was slightly different. Once I was done with most of the base coats, I started highlighting the armor. The thinking process is quite easy here, but the execution is tricky considering how small the model actually is. Infinity models are highlighted in a way that every surface has some kind of color transition, upper facing parts are brighter than the areas that are facing down, and every edge is nicely and thinly highlighted. No worries, we can do this. 
I used medium blue as the first highlight and established where the brighter parts of each of the surfaces should be. I used the box art to inform me about where I should put my lights, which made things a bit easier. I tried to be fancy with some of these panels, but later realized that I don't like what I did as much as I like the box art. Not a big surprise since it was painted by a much better and experienced painter than I am. So I ate some humble pie and repainted those panels later, especially on the legs. For the second highlight, I mixed some medium blue and sky blue together. Something like a 50-50 mix, I suppose, and increased the highlights everywhere covering a smaller area inside the medium blue highlight I did earlier. The armor started to look somewhat cool. After this I was burnt out on the blue a bit and started to do various other things. I found that this helps me keep my motivation up since now I can do something slightly different and in some cases slightly easier or less important on the model before moving on with the really important parts. It also helps to have some of the other parts painted since I get a better understanding of how the model will look in the end. The cape is a pretty big part of the model, so I also put some effort into that. Initially I wanted to just shade it like everything else, with some transitions between the lighter and the darker areas, but then decided to go fancier and apply a texture to it, so we will get back to it later. I also added all the reddish or orange bits by first undercoating everything that was supposed to be glowing red in white, and then applying magma drot flame contrast paint over them. The white undercoat made the color way more vibrant. Then it was time to get back to the armor, first with a lighter mix of medium blue and sky blue, and then with pure sky blue, and finally with some off white. And since this took me ages, let's see a montage. I also turned back to the cape to finish it off by applying texture on top of the rough blending I did before. I used this technique a couple of times before and I think it looks much better than a simple transition. It is also quite simple to do once you get the hang of it, so let me know if you want to see a tutorial about it on the channel. Finally I finished all the other bits of the model. I highlighted the whites until I reached an off-white. It looks passable, but I'll have to further refine it for the next models, I think. Then I highlighted the metal parts, paying attention to highlight all the edges properly and adding some basic non-metallic effect. With that and some simple basing the model was done. I'm quite happy with it, but there are definitely ways to improve the process and the end result further. Next time I will pay more attention to the whites and use some of the time I lost on changing things to further smooth out the armor. But what do you guys think? Do you think it's worth putting this much effort into an army, considering that you need much less models than for 40k, or do you still prefer to do something simpler? Also, would you like to see more Infinity content on the channel? Let me know. Until then, don't forget to like the video if you like the content, and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see some more like it. See you in the next one.